After waking up with a jolt, the girl laid in bed a few seconds longer, reaching over the switch on her bedside lamp. She tried to remember exactly what happened, but she couldn't. The brunette swung her legs over to the side of the bed and heaved herself up. Checking the time on her phone, she snorted when she saw it was midnight. The witching hour. Knowing that sleep would only evade her, she left her bedroom for the kitchen. A good cup of coffee in her mind. As she passed by her front door, a chill spread like a liquid fire down her spine. It's only winter, she told herself, focusing again on the coffee plan, measuring out scoops of water, preparing her cup kept her occupied. But as the dark liquid boiled, she had nothing left to keep her mind from wandering off. The chill returned, and she couldn't help but glance behind her in front of the door. It stood there innocently, though, just like always. The dead bolt was still in place, and she could see nothing amiss with it. Turning back to her coffee, she did her best to forget about that feeling. With her cup in hand, she started to walk towards her bedroom. As she walked by the front door, she decided that a quick glance of the peephole would help calm her restless mind. The chill worsened with each step she took towards the door and further away from the safety and warmth of her blankets. She passed her empty hand against the cold metal door and took a deep breath before leading her eye through the people. At first, she could only see inky blackness and somehow seemed to swirl in itself. But she blinked in surprise. The void melted away. She wished it hadn't. In its place, there stood what... I guess what would be a man. The limbs were inhumanly awkward, with bulky joints branching off into several arms, not unlike the branches of a tree. The creature was draped in a black suit, somehow making the thing more nightmarish to her. She shoved herself away from the door, with the hand still pressed against it. The scaling mug of coffee fell, the liquid burning her bare legs as she fell backwards and tried to crawl away from the door. She knew somehow, in her mind, has not been playing tricks on her. As she crab walked away from the door, she watched the tendrils of the black void she first saw through the cracks. The girl was trapped between instinct to flee and the gut feeling not to turn her back to the door. When the door jolted, the urge to flee overcame her, and she slipped in the burning liquid as she tried to make it back to her room. She knew, deep down, that she was trapping herself in a corner, but she had to get away from the door. The girl was halfway down the hallway when she heard the previously locked door creak open. She screamed and slipped into a wall, cracking her chin on it and stunning her. After that, it was only blackness. Nicole? A warm male voice snapped the woman out of her trance. As she turned around, it was met by one of the sister's doctors. She nodded, not sure if she should say anything, or even if she should find her voice. That morning, she had gotten an urgent phone call from the hospital, saying that her sister, Lindsay, was there. Before they had even let her see her, the doctor had pulled her off to the side and insisted that they talk to her about what might have happened. Phrases like self-inflicted and assault had been thrown around. Nicole felt her mind reel. She still hadn't fully understood what they had been saying until she saw Lindsay up with her own eyes. Her little sister had a bandage wrapped around her head, covering both her ears as well as her eyes. They said it was hard to keep her now, deadened eyes from drying out to try to keep the infection out of the wounds Lindsay made on her ears. The doctors had guessed that either she or someone else jammed a pencil in them to keep her off balance or to deafen herself against something. There was the mix 
of first and second degree burns on her hands and legs from what was assumed the coffee from her cup. As Nicole walked into her sister's hospital room for the first time, she thought that she had spied the silhouette of a man in the window that she knew was impossible because her sister's room was on the third story of the hospital. <laughs>